I turned everything off here so we can actually see that quicker. So now I can, with that setup, I can not just rotate the world with the buildings. By the way, these are my originals. Maybe I just hide these. So I can rotate the whole system, including the buildings, or then on top of that, rotate buildings individual that's that's very helpful if i want to test my the orientation of my building that test different orientation of the building then this is very useful so again yeah you can see that now i have rotated the buildings but i can still rotate the whole system with it now it becomes much more interesting with of course the wind date so i will go back here place zero let's assume that we have that the buildings are in the correct uh, rotation now how do we get the wind data actually into into here that's at the end um, what determines the utci the, the outdoor comfort more wind faster winds of course is feels cooler than let's say a, a very little velocity so butterfly let's jump in the butterfly butterfly for that, we need first the butterfly geometry. I'm going here very quickly. You can look, watch my other videos uh, about butterfly and how to set it up, but this is more about how to get the wind data and also the wind direction um, into our whole UTCI calculation. So getting this in here, that creates my geometry. We need, we need a name for that building. No, no spaces in between, we need to be one word otherwise you're gonna run into problems i will not talk about these boundary refinement levels check my other videos for that we don't need it necessarily for this type of study and um, just because just if it becomes more a uh, more delicate model then maybe then this is going to be important but for this now it's not so we now have a building geometry again the name is important in geometry then we need the um create case from tunnel that again needs a name. Very important that this is a specific or in very individual name. UTCI to wind, maybe. And it needs the, the geometry. And that, that's pretty much it. But we need the wind vector. Wind vector. We could now use the wind speeds from our from our wind rows. We know that the highest are here to uh, 2.6. So we could put that as a number. Or you can put a slider. This is the wind speed. So you see it's actually creating a vector and the wind direction the wind direction i will talk about because this this is the bit which is the troublemaker uh, it doesn't always work and uh, it doesn't work with the gradients of the wind tunnel but for that let's build the wind tunnel first wind tunnel we go back in here with a uh, case create case from wind tunnel that's what we did now we need the um wind tunnel parameters we'll talk about in the, about that in a second let's turn off this here again just a bit annoying the wind tunnel parameters they go in here but we haven't set any wind tunnel yet and we need to run it also that's important boolean toggle i'm going a bit quicker now because um see that we're running out of time let's run that true and you can see created this this case this uh, eight points representing the corners of the wind tunnel we could show that uh, load mesh case No, that actually doesn't work. Um, okay, we, we still need this, but um, we need to first build the block mesh. That's dividing the, spade, the wind tunnel in smaller cells. And now we can actually look at it. So we can have this here and the case here. And we also need the right button. Now this created my block mesh. It's basically dividing the wind tunnel in smaller cells. Get that for now we don't need that it's just a matter of showing it but what we want we want to apply grading well actually maybe it was not so stupid segment grading wind tunnel grading let's skip that here case yeah we want to grade the wind tunnel but also we might want to make it smaller that's why we have this here wind ward we can put a different number two and you will readily see what 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 it does top we can change the number it's about making the wind tunnel smaller so it's calculating faster for this exercise sides maybe three you can see it makes it smaller and leeward is pretty much the longest maybe let's 
just uh, use five. Okay, so we have set this up. That will help us to calculate faster. You can always make it bigger if the calculation looks weird and if you think you need a bigger space. But the grading will help us to also uh, focus the calculation on a certain area. Uh, the wind tunnel, we need the wind tunnel here. We can set the cell size, but actually this is all set up. We don't need too much. The grading to put in here and you see it actually, it tries to focus around here and uh, we also need to provide the cell count. No, it takes, of course, a bit longer. Now, this, of course, made a much more finer, much more finer cell setup. You could play with the cell size here. It seems like it's a bit small. That would be a problem if we always recalculate that. So I would, in that case, probably go a bit larger just for now and provide a different cell size here. It's almost a bit too too wide, but let's not worry about this for now. So one would be probably to make this even smaller. The case seems like it's still not very, very big. Too small is also not good because then it will affect your calculation, but it feels like for now, I think it's okay. If you then do a proper calculation, I would recommend to extend that size bit but uh, for, for the sake of speed for now to show you i think that's fine so we have set this up uh, we can remove this because it always takes a while to actually create that mesh on the viewport next the next thing we need to apply is the hexy snap mesh snappy hex mesh sorry the case again we need the case and here i will not do much except that I do this here, I just run it. Some things to mention about it. Please check my other videos about how to set up the snappy hex mesh. You can look at that as well. It's actually combined the, the geometry, but not very, very well, I have to say. So it, I would go here into the um, refinement levels. And it is actually a bit, I think, I mean, this is something to play around, of course. I would probably for now just take two and two and not run it, but uh, maybe change the cell size to a bit less large. I think 10 was a bit too crazy, especially when we have, um, when we had one in the previous uh, script. So now it makes uh, much more sense. Uh, let's have a look at the the model now so you can actually see it has properly integrated the model into the wind tunnel so this is like one mesh object again we can hide that we don't need to show that let's not keep that for now but we need to go back to butterfly now we need a um, a calculation a recipe we need to have this um, steady incompressible recipe and we need to have a solution Butterfly solution. This is the main brain of that uh, script. We need to provide the recipe. This is just to provide uh, a turbulence model. You can just use any of these. Please read about. Uh, there's YouTube videos about. There is. There are links here in the in the description which you can check what they mean. Um, I'll just use this one. Turbulence model. We need a the solution parameters and here we have two inputs which are important the control dictionary and the probes and as you know we already set up a grid here for our UTCI calculation which is this one and we can reuse that now so I would almost try to maybe have this here And now I can reuse the probes. From here. Oh, no, that actually doesn't work like that. Sorry. We need to first define it as probes. <laughs> probes are not points. It's something different. Now we can add the probes, the points actually as a probes. 
and we also need to specify the field we're actually testing field meaning the item we're testing in that case u we provide a u for the velocity and there's a writing interval but let's not talk about it <laughs> now there's a problem actually with this setup and i will explain you what's happening we have these probe points and we have the geometry Hoppa. no it's not what i wanted sorry now the points inside calculate calculating these as wind for the wind speed they actually make no sense because they're inside these volumes so in order to, to get rid of these we need to do some culling culling i think we probably could say that like that um we test basically um, if if a point is inside an object or outside so we have our objects and we have our points and now it tells us it gives us a, a boolean list of true and false on all the points which either inside or outside and we want to create a pattern or we want to call the pattern call pattern oh no so we need to get this here we need to provide the list and uh, this is the pattern and now we have only sorry i took the wrong tool um there's this uh <laughs> have to be careful there's points in b wrap and there's points point in b wraps so we have to work points and the objects buildings blocks and of course it's logic that they need to be they need to be closed properly and now we have a list of these points inside the blocks of course we want to have the outside blocks perfectly fine we can actually just apply here an invert and now we have all the outside points and this is our new list this is our new list for the probes now we need to be careful that we always have the same amount of probes and cells for both the wind and the UTCI. So that's very important. In order to do that, we need to make sure that whatever goes in here has the same amount of points. So we, we, we're not using these points here, we're using these points. This is the location you want to use. And secondly, we need to make sure that um, the output we 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 creating, the, 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 the mesh we're using here also has the same amount of points or mesh cells so we have a mesh and the cool thing here that we actually can apply something like the mesh uh, cal, cal mesh faces it's perfect they already provided the right things so we can feed the mesh in here and we can use the same at this time we we don't need to invert it because we call the mesh faces now we create a new mesh where this has these holes in here and you see where the original mesh went it went in our heat map so we need to replace that because we need to make sure that the the points the amount of points is the same amount of cells on the mesh the same amount of probes for the wind otherwise we run we run into problems so that's we always need to make we need to make sure that this is correct and then now here we need to provide the field that's what i've already said before and the control dictionary for the um, control dictionary with that we can control the iterations the amount of iterations and the writing interval and here i just put something like 300 maximum let's rerun this sorry i need to <laughs> i'm gonna keep this low here for now please check my other videos on how to set it up i want to i, want to, I need this a bit faster for the sake of explaining it okay that's fine and i will try to stick with that for now so i don't want to change this again and now we can actually run and calculate the wind speed And it's already starting to calculate. We can't see much, but we can actually look at the output solution here. Oh no, actually we need a, we need this load probes values. Sorry, 
So therefore we need a solution and we need to provide the field again, which is the velocity meter per second. It goes in here and now we should be able to see the values. Yes. And now we, we only see vectors really. In order to see the wind speeds, we can translate that in the vector length. We go in here. Now we see for each of these points the wind speed. And we're almost there. I just want to visualize the, the vectors quickly. So we can, um, I will not color it, but we can look at the vectors by uh, using the display. And we provide the point, the point, the origin which is the prop points, these points in our, from our list here, and the vector itself. Oh, vector. Because I want to turn off the, the points again. This is a bit annoying. Now we can see our our vectors going around the buildings and you can see that we don't have any vectors inside inside these boxes and the longer they are the faster so that's pretty cool and now we could just re we could just use these values the wind the wind vector or the, the length of the vector in in here wind velocity so we're talking about the vector that means the wind speed per cell and now we only have 199 because we reduced these cells here. We don't have, uh, we don't measure the ones which are inside the box. But we can take this and maybe we have a, a, a relay. Let's see. Don't need this anymore. But we want to feed in the wind here. And now we could run that, of course. Hopefully everything works. It now starts to take really long to run. Test, uh, let's see. So everything looks still fine. Now it should be, this should be faster, hopefully. Yeah, it all works. I just want to turn off my, uh, first of all, I'll turn off these. Yeah, they can be on, but I hope to turn off the mesh. Yes, the mesh. Is and I can also play with the the vector. I can also multiply vector just to play a bit with the with the size of it. So that gives us a bit a nicer output. And you can see here actually really well that wherever the wind starts to speed up, it becomes quicker, uh, becomes um, cooler. But there's a problem with on how the, the two things kind of interfere with, with each other. The mesh kind of overlaps with the vector because the vector, they're not always straight or horizontal. So what we could do in order to play with that, we could move the points. Move yeah, it's already okay by not by ten. It would only ten. I could add a set unit here with one meter. That's that's enough. And that we could use as our points instead. And of course it's uh, recalculating a bit you will see it better uh, when we reload but or we could also of course move our mesh it's uh, maybe even better we'll move our mesh down i think that's what i did before anyway so geometry minus one and we use that as our new mesh geometry So now it's the vector are much better visible than before. Now the the problem now is that the wind direction is actually not the correct one because according to our wind rows at that this day that this period our wind prevailing wind would be um, around here eighty percent eight uh, eighty degree from 
if north is zero and east is 90 so it would be around here yeah exactly here that's our direction wind direction so how do how do we get this here i mean we could just very simply draw a line or let's say we could rotate our buildings that would be one thing now we have the ability to actually rotate our buildings to test uh, instead of rotating the wind we're rotating the building but then we have the problem that it doesn't fit to the sun system so we could rotate the, the entire sun system in order to fit to the to the wind direction that would be one thing to do like we could do that it's not very satisfying so here we would need to have a vector as an input but we only have an angle is degree here oh sorry here so i did that already before in the previous thing and it was actually took me a while to understand and figure it out trigonometry i got everything but basically uh, i can just copy this i will explain it in a bit what that does so in order to make a vector from an angle we need to first translate our vector into radians sorry our, our angle into radians no not uh yes so in order to calculate the vector we need to do a, a sine and cosine and cosine calculation the, the sine gives us the y direction and um, the cosine gives us the z direction but because this is radians or the output we need is um is should be in need to be in radians so we need to we need to uh, calculate it correctly to better understand so one problem here is that the north the north is zero but normally in trigonometry the zero starts not at the north not going upwards so that we need to also take into account so that's why um here i use i used uh, i detached basically the degree from from the from the tool so we have 80 here so i could put 80 here and um in order to match in order to match the wind rows prevailing wind we need to set it so it works with that system so if i choose 80 as my in that case 80 as my prevailing wind direction and let's hide that for a moment and i can actually look at it so we can set here the I set a base point and then I set the tip point. This is my tip point, this is my base point. The base point should be actually here. Yeah, that works. And this should be here as well. Now it already works really. 60 would be here, 80 would be here. There. So that's that's already the correct uh, orientation. How do we get there? Well, let's start with the equations here. So in order to get the correct sign from my uh, degree for my degrees i need this formula sine from radians x is y this gives me the y distance 0 0.1 in that case or 0 0.17 blah, and so on and then uh, for the x i need the same with the cosine cosine of radians of y because i can also do it like this but now if i would put that in here then my orientation would be wrong zero would be actually somewhere else uh, based on trigonometry the zero would be on that side facing x so to overcome that i i add another formula here and say x first of all is the opposite direction plus 90 so it rotates in the op opposite direction and it starts uh 90, 90 degrees earlier so if i put this in here then i have the same orientation as now the same orientation as my wind rows so zero is 90 uh, sorry north is zero east is 90 south is 180 west is 100 uh, 270 and so on and 80 would be then facing this way and actually to get the prevailing wind uh facing that direction because it would be actually this direction would actually show it would actually go in that direction here i take the resulting vector and in, in, invert the vector that gives me the actual the actual direction of the wind otherwise it would be like this i hope it's it's clear so i we take we take the vector the the degree take the degree the angle or the the prevailing angle or direction as degrees we adjust we adjust the orientation so it fits that system when where zero is in the north and not in the west 
and where it also rotates with the clock. That's important. And then we uh, calculate the, the cosine and sine in radians to get the actual points for that vector. And now, of course, it's zero. And we take the vector, we apply a, an inverse function. So it actually points in the other direction, and we just uh, create a display so we know how it, in which direction it's actually pointing. Now, instead of like having the slider here, I could just provide that number here. So that's my vector. This that's the vector we need for the wind analysis. Now, problem is that it not always works. And I actually don't know now if that works. The previous didn't. That's why I set a manual slider to adjust that here. So in case in case my prevailing wind 80 degrees doesn't work for whatever reason, there's some some math problem in here in that uh, in that gradient tool, and we will see it right away. Then I can use the slider to adjust slightly in order to make it work. Okay, I will just show you how what I mean by that. So if I take now the vector, this is the wind direction, and put it in here. It seems we are lucky. You are lucky, it works. <laughs> so it worked, I will just stop that. So it can calculate the UTCI map, heat map. It becomes quite heavy, the calculation. So now you can see it worked super fine. It worked really good. Um, it's This is not always the case. It's not always the case. And I show you, I show you why, but uh, let's first examine the heat map. So now that worked really well actually no problem at all we now have the correct wind um, direction and that also has a big influence on the actual output because as you remember before actually here was very blue in that bit uh, but now it's actually says something very different so wind coming from that side will actually cool down that space here and so on so that that's the power of of uh really figuring out the whole how the whole script works together with the correct uh, wind direction to that specific time or that period and, and and so on i'm glad it really worked out if for some reason and i can show you when it doesn't work so for example if i have maybe that also works now fine but i'm i don't think so so i tried this before with 60 my output was 60 before and 60 did not work. So if I put this in here, it suddenly runs through very quickly and it didn't work. It actually it's still the same uh, wind direction. So it didn't change anything. And when we now look at, yeah, that's the problem. So now you see that it didn't work. It, it didn't work out. There was some issue with the number it created um, an invalid input here in that gradient, in the, in the gradient, in the wind tunnel gradient tool. That is the problem. That's why I have this slider here where I can adjust and say, okay, let's put, let's try 61 and let's see if that works. And it's almost the same. And actually, it doesn't. In that case, it doesn't. It has something to do with the combination of wind speed and that number, that degree. And that's really annoying. So that's why I'm trying to give several options on how we can actually use the rotation. And now it seems like it worked, interestingly. Let's see, no, it did not. It did not. That's the problem with butterfly. That's that's one of the things which are really annoying, and it's uh, hard to maybe let's try to reset by just typing a new name. It creates a new wind tunnel, and maybe that helps. Yeah, it's interesting that um, eighty works. For some for some weird reason and 60 doesn't so that's why if that 
if that doesn't work out, you can always go back and rotate the entire um, world without rotating the wind, the wind rows. So you basically keep the wind coming from the main direction as it always does and rotate uh, your world with the buildings and so on that it fits that wind direction. And this is um, hopefully explains everything a bit better. So you do see all this. Oh yeah, I will stop that. And this is funny, it really works fine here. So I will I will still investigate that a bit more. So yeah, that really works fine. So again, if if you run into problem with the wind vector, the direction, and this becomes an issue where this turns red, it has something to do with the number, the wind direction, uh, and the the value which is calculated here, whatever that means, that value. Uh, there's a way to play, of course, with the cell ratio, with uh, all kinds of things. You can try to solve it, but if you can't, and uh, the absolute exact wind direction matters, or maybe it doesn't matter, then you can adjust it slightly and say, okay, it's maybe not 60, it's maybe 65 or 60. I mean, wind is never that exactly in that direction. Uh, then you could uh, play with that, or you unplug the wind direction and keep the original wind direction and rotate and rotate your north. Basically, your entire system, you rotate your entire system, including the buildings, that it matches the wind direction you want to test. Yeah, um, again, Melvina, thanks for joining as a member. I hope and I hope this video helps you. Uh, let me know if uh, if it doesn't and if you need more help. And uh, Comma 45. I, I know you asked if you if we could if I could share uh, project files. I did that in the past actually. Most of the not all of them, but uh, pretty much or let's say some of the videos have actually a, a link in the show notes where it points to a, a OneDrive where you can download the file. It's not very uh, well maintained at the moment, but I'm planning to have a second level of membership where I provide all the files as well. And there, from there, you could, if you want to upgrade your membership, you can upload from, download from there. But in the meanwhile, in the meantime, uh, since I don't have that level uh, yet, just ask me for which for which video you want to have, uh, you would like to have the file, and I can uh, check if I have it and I can send it to you. I hope that makes sense and helps you. And uh, yeah. Anybody is welcome to also join my channel and support my channel. That would be absolutely fantastic. Hope you have a good time all together. See you in the next video.